Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum Guide Top 10 Recommended Ramen Samurai Junjiro Channel Hi, I'm Akane Maru, born and raised in Japan. This video is about the Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum. We will taste and compare 10 different types of ramen, from classic to unique. We'll also introduce retro sweets and experience of making cup ramen, so please watch until the end. Now, let's get started! We have arrived at Shin Yokohama Station. It takes about 40 minutes by train from Tokyo Station to Shin Yokohama Station and about 30 minutes from Shibuya Station. Also, you can arrive in about 40 minutes from Shinjuku Station. By the way, Shin Yokohama Station is a stop for the Shinkansen that connects to the Kansai region. It's recommended to get off here when heading from Osaka or Kyoto to Tokyo. This time, we will introduce these six sections. All right, let's head to our destination. The north exit is the closest exit. It's about a 9-minute walk from the station. This is the Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum we're introducing this time. It's the world's first ramen themes amusement park that opened in 1994. It's a popular tourist spot that attracts about 800,000 visitors a year. By the way, there is an admission fee. Adults are 380 yen, and children and senior citizens are 100 yen. Now, let's go inside the ramen museum. This theme park is divided into three floors. There is an English brochure available at the entrance with detailed explanation about the facilities, so please pick one up. On the first floor, you'll find an introduction to the history of Japanese ramen and a souvenir shop. There are also plenty of photo spots. The souvenir shop sells unique ramen from various regions of Japan, bowls, chopsticks, and more. At the back of the first floor, there is a recommended place. You can experience making ramen here. It's by reservation, so please check the official website in the description box for details. One of the most popular places on this floor is the Rahaku Sugomen Lab. You can choose noodles and toppings freely to make your own custom cup ramen. There is an English manual available, so don't worry. Once you've connected to Wi-Fi of the ramen museum, Use your smartphone to scan the QR code in the manual. After entering your name and your phone number, you can select your favorite soup and toppings. You can choose the design for the cup ramen lid from the photos on your smartphone. After you've made all your selections, a QR code will be generated, so please show it at the checkout counter and pay. It depends on how crowded it is, but on the day we visited, we were able to receive cup ramen in about 5 minutes after ordering it. When the cup ramen is ready, you'll receive a text message. We were able to easily create the one and only special cup ramen in the world. This cup ramen is made by a brand called Sugomen, which is particularly famous for its high quality among Japanese instant noodles. It features authentic, chewy noodles that you wouldn't expect from instant noodles. If you visit here, be sure to try making your special cup ramen. Now, let's head down to the basement first floor. The basement first floor recreates the streets of old Japan. There are plenty of places that will make you want to take photos. On this floor, there is a shop selling Japanese snacks. These are all snacks that have been popular in Japan for a long time. We will introduce two items. First, let us introduce ramune, a drink with a marble inside. 
The marble inside serves as a stopper, so it's easier to drink when you place it inside this recess. It has a sweet flavor, but it's carbonated, so the aftertaste is refreshing. You can also take out the marble after finishing your drink. Next, we will introduce this snack that is made by deep frying potatoes. It has a fried chicken taste and is seasoned with a strong flavor. The crispy texture is addictive. It's nice that it's a reasonable price. We will introduce a retro cafe on this floor later. All right, let's head down to the basement second floor, which is the main floor of this building. On the basement second floor, there are ramen shops and it's bustling with many people. Inside this building, there are seven ramen shops gathered from various parts of Japan. For your information, it can get crowded from around 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if you come around 3 p.m., you can get into the ramen shop smoothly with fewer lines. On weekends, you might have to wait for two hours just to eat one bowl of ramen. So we recommend coming on weekdays. There are seven ramen shops, but two of them are temporary restaurants. This time, we will introduce 10 types of ramen from the five permanent restaurants. First, let's introduce this restaurant, Rai Rai Ken. It's a historic ramen shop that was established in 1910 in Asakusa, Tokyo. The ramen we ordered this time is a mini-sized portion, smaller than the regular one. It's about three-fifths the size of a regular ramen, so it's recommended for those who want to try various types of ramen. First, we will have the chashu ramen. It's a soy sauce flavored ramen that comes with five slices of chashu pork, and it's a luxurious one. The soup simmered for a long time with ingredients like pork, chicken, vegetables, and seafood has a wonderful aroma. It has a refreshing flavor of soy sauce. The richness of the ingredients is concentrated. The chashu pork is fatty and juicy. It has just the right texture and it's satisfying to eat. The noodles are made from Japanese wheat, sato no sora, so they have a nice aroma. They are thin noodles but have a chewy texture. Next, we will have wonton ramen. It's a soy sauce flavored ramen, just like the one we had earlier, but this one comes with many wontons. The bamboo shoots have a rich soy sauce flavor and a crunchy texture. The wontons have a smooth texture. The juices overflow from the minced meat inside. It's a recommended ramen shop for those who like simple flavors. Next, we will introduce this restaurant, Miraku. It's a famous ramen shop located on Rishiri Island in Hokkaido. It's a soy sauce flavored ramen just like before, but they stir fry the soy sauce in a pot, giving it a savory aroma. The soup is filled with the umami of kombu seaweed. It uses curly noodles, so the soup is coated well. They also offer spicy ramen with added chili pepper in the soy sauce ramen. The flavor of the ramen at this restaurant is richer compared to the previous one. It's great that we can easily enjoy the taste of ramen from Hokkaido. Next up, we will introduce this restaurant, Komurasaki. It's a ramen shop located in Kumamoto Prefecture, which is in southern Japan. The main branch is a historic restaurant that was established in 1954. First, we will have the tonkotsu ramen, which is popular in Kumamoto. The ramen at this restaurant has fried and finely chopped garlic in it, so it has a nice aroma. There are also chicken bones in the pork bone soup, giving it a mild flavor. There are many tonkotsu ramen with rich flavor, but this restaurant has a refreshing taste. The chashu uses pork from Kagoshima Prefecture. The pork was raised on sweet potatoes, giving it a sweet flavor. 
The noodles are thin and have a smooth texture. The green onions and garlic enhances the flavor. Next, we will have the tonkotsu ramen with corn. It's a popular one among kids. The wood ear mushrooms and bean sprouts have a good texture. The sweet corn and pork bone soup are a perfect match. Now, let's move on to the next restaurant. Next up, we will introduce Tondo. It's a ramen shop located in Okinawa Prefecture, which is in southern Japan. First, we will have the Shio Ramen. The soup uses ingredients like kombu seaweed and niboshi, dried small sardines, so it has a wonderful aroma. It's made with salt from Okinawa, giving it a refreshing taste. The thin noodles go well with the Japanese flavor soup. You can also taste the sweetness of scallops. This ramen contains citrus fruit from Okinawa. It has a refreshing aroma. The chashu pork is fatty and melts in your mouth. You can only try shio ramen at this shop in the ramen museum, so be sure to give it a try. The next place is Ryu Shanghai Honten. It's a ramen shop in Yamagata Prefecture, founded in 1960. This shop is the only one in the ramen museum that offers two different types of mini-sized ramen with distinct flavors. First, we will try the most popular one, the spicy miso ramen. It's a rich soup made with niboshi broth and miso. It has a pleasant aroma of aonori seaweed. The combination of miso and garlic makes it an addictive flavor. The texture of the Naruto and bamboo shoots is nice. The noodles are thick and chewy. It's curly noodles, so they coat well with the rich soup. When you dissolve the spicy miso and eat it, the flavor changes, so you can enjoy it until the end without getting tired of the taste. This ramen is recommended for those who like spicy food. The last one is the soy sauce ramen. The soup is made by simmering chicken bones and seafood slowly to create the broth. It's refreshing, but you can taste the richness of soy sauce. The thick noodles have a strong wheat aroma and are delicious. Try tasting and comparing the flavors of soy sauce ramen and miso ramen. All right, we will introduce the next place. The last shop is Kateko, located on the basement first floor. It's a popular cafe where you can enjoy sweets and experience a retro Japanese atmosphere. We recommend trying their soft serve ice cream, which sells over 500 servings a day. But this time, we'll introduce two desserts that we highly recommend. First, we start with the matcha soft serve ice cream. There are plenty of matcha powder on top of the soft serve. The bitterness of matcha is just right. The rich milk flavored soft serve and the aroma of matcha are a perfect combination. It's the perfect dessert after having a rich flavored ramen. The last one is the pudding. It's a classic Japanese pudding, topped with whipped cream and a cherry. It has the sweet aroma of caramel. The pudding has a firm texture and a rich flavor of egg yolk. The subtle bitterness of caramel and the sweetness of whipped cream enhance the deliciousness of the pudding. It's a highly recommended dessert. Finally, let us share some tips for visiting the ramen museum. When you visit a ramen shop, you have to order one bowl of ramen for each person. Eating a regular-sized bowl of ramen might fill you up, and you might not be able to try other ramen, so we recommend trying the mini-sized portion we introduced this time. At the ramen museum, you can't use Suica cards or credit cards. It's better to have cash. If you have large luggage, 
it's better to use the coin lockers located between the first floor and the basement first floor. When you come to Japan, be sure to visit the ramen museum and try some delicious ramen to compare flavors. That's all for today. See you in the next video. Bye-bye!